Hey guys, it's top 10, top 10 minutes for unit five. Let's talk about this. We're talking about surface processes. Whoops, let me get my camera where it's blanking out some of the board that I really don't need you to see. Let's talk about the top 10 things for surface processes. We'll talk about um, all those things that happen to uh, sediment and particles on our planet. Then we'll talk a little bit about soil. Then we'll go and talk about rivers surface waters then we'll go down under the ground into groundwater and we'll finish out with karst and caves that's a lot to do i may break this one in two but stick with me for just a minute and let's talk about this well i've got a diagram up on the board let me move this over a little bit there you go so you can see it behind me all right so i've drawn three different things up here we've got weathering erosion and deposition okay so that's what happens to surface processes and things on the top of the ground here on our planet we have weathering erosion and deposition that happens when we talk about weathering what is our really simple definition for weathering it's going to be breaks down okay so things break down other materials on the planet. Well, what does that and how does that work? Well, we have physical, physical mechanisms that break things down. And we also have chemical. So I am making a mind map to sort of help me, okay? Or a diagram to help me. So we have physical and chemical um, things that break down earth materials okay so physical we want to remember that physical one of those things is what we call ice wedging so uh, when ice um i'm gonna misspell it here because it's late in the day and i'm having trouble remembering everything ice wedging or freeze thaw okay so when rock is sitting there and have a crack and it water gets down in there it freezes and then it thaws again. As it freezes, it expands. And then as it thaws, it contracts. So what it does is it breaks that rock down slowly by freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing, thawing, freezing and thawing, okay? So that's ice wedging or freeze thaw. Okay, we can also have uh, plants and animals that, that break down things. You know, animals burrow into things, dig around in things, and plants grow roots that get down into um, rock and break it apart eventually. So we can have both of those happening. You know, water in and of itself can physically uh, break down things just by running over it like rocks in a stream. We would call some of that abrasion. Wind can have, cause abrasion as well. Um, as water. So physically, wind and water can abrade, uh, cause abrasion on things. Another one that we could put in here is exfoliation. Okay, so exfoliation is that cracking of rock when they've had a lot of pressure on them due to overlying dirt and other rock, and maybe that gets taken away so it exposes that rock. With less pressure, that rock begins to crack and sort of slough off, okay? So that's exfoliation. What about chemical weathering? Chemical weathering is another way to break things up. We can do that with acids, okay? Acids like carbonic acid is a weak acid that often breaks things down. You can also have things like um, oxidation oxidation is oxygen and a metal reacting together that is a chemical reaction with chemical reactions whatever you're talking about uh, the substance that you're talking about is forever changed something about it is changed with physical it's still the same thing it's just broken down into smaller pieces okay so another one with uh, chemical is going to be hydrolysis Having trouble spelling today. Hydro, that's a Y, hydrolysis. Okay, what is that? That is the action of water to break things down at the chemical level. It breaks bonds. Um, water is the universal solvent. So anytime you have water on something, it is definitely trying to break it down chemically and it may be doing it physically as well. Okay, so there you have, that's your quick weathering.
what's going on with erosion. So things are broken down here. Earth materials are broken down. Then they are moved. That's our definition. They are moved. Moved. Okay, simple definition. Well, what, what helps move things? There are five agents of erosion. So we have uh, wind, water, we have ice, we have gravity, and possibly um, animals and plants. Not so much plants, but they can, uh, let me just put animals in there. Animals, okay, because we can move stuff, humans, animals, that's more of what I'm thinking of, I think. All right, so moved, breaks down, and then is moving something. All right. And then lastly, depositing stuff. So how is the deposition um, labeled? What's its definition? So we would, our definition in class was drops. All right. So stuff gets weathered, it gets moved, and it gets dropped. All these agents move this, this earth material, wind, water, ice, gravity, and animals or humans. Okay. So what's the deposition of wind? So for wind, a deposition of wind would be a dune or loess, a powdery um, part of particulate of, of uh, the ground. It's like very dusty when it blows in the wind, it kind of cakes on things. That's loess. So wind, what about a deposition of water? What is a deposition of water? Well, we can have deltas and we can have alluvial fans. Both of these are fan-shaped. Uh, a delta is when a river possibly enters a larger body of water and it slows down. When it slows down, it drops all of its sediment or most of its sediment into a fan shape. And it's that fan shape is actually very um, nutrient rich and can grow a lot of things. So delta, alluvial fan is water coming off of arid mountains dropping their sediment into another fan shape at the base of these mountains. And arid means dry. Okay, so what about um, ice or glacier? What does a glacier drop behind? What does it leave behind? It leaves till. Those are all those bits and pieces that that glacier is grabbing as it moves down a mountainside. When it gets to its final resting place and possibly it uh, begins to melt and it recedes a little bit, it may leave a moraine <clears throat> in front and to the sides of it where it has pushed dirt. It's like a little mound or a hill. That's called a moraine. And then lastly, what about, uh, let's go with gravity. What can gravity do? Gravity does a lot of mass movements. So mass movements, and what are some of those mass movements? Well, one of them is creep, that slow downhill motion of trees and fence lines and um, mailboxes as that top layer of soil creeps on, a, on an incline or a slope, okay? Two, we could have things such as rock falls. We can have avalanches, we can have uh, mudslides, uh, we can have, um, let's see, we could have uh, a lahar with, associated with a volcano as things rush down a hillside. So all of these things are due to gravity. Gravity increases, that's the agent that really pulls things down. Okay, so those are some of your mass movements. They can be prevented, some of them can be prevented by walls, retaining walls or mesh cages to keep rocks from falling. You can plant trees anytime trees or grasses are involved, they have roots that cling on to the um, soil, so it helps hold all of that in, okay? Let's see, I'm about to run out of time on this. I may just leave this as a quick review for um, earth processes as far as moving and dropping materials. So if you have questions about that, come see me, but that is weathering, erosion, and deposition. We will come back to um, 
we'll, we'll come back to unit five. I'll split 